In this video, I'm going to show you how I made and poured these custom epoxy countertops. Let's get into it. I started by removing the old laminate countertops. Stone Coat Countertops, whose epoxy I'll be using, actually has a special primer so you can go right over existing laminate, but these were just way too damaged to try to save. After pulling the countertop away from the cabinets and wall, I cut them into a few sections to make it more manageable to carry. The camera was vibrating like crazy, so I'll spare you that footage. Next, I added in some additional supports inside the cabinets. The old countertops were dished in really bad, so this will help prevent that from happening again over time. Especially on this right side of the sink, it was just one huge long cabinet with no center supports. On the island, which was non-existent before, I routed in a groove to be able to recess these 3 8 inch steel supports I made for the bar height countertop. This turned out really strong and sleek looking in the end. I wanted to make a dedicated video on just these countertops, so to see the rest of the remodel, make sure you subscribe for the next video. With the cabinets and island all prepped, I could begin breaking down the 3 quarter inch MDF to rough depth. The walls in this old farmhouse were pretty jacked up, so I squared the MDF up the best I could, and then I scribed the board on the back along the wall. You can see the wall bowed in well over an inch in the middle. Next I carried the pieces back outside and cut close to the line with the jigsaw and then finished it up with a belt sander. And that's a much better fit. The corners were even worse than that but after the same scribing process they fit like a glove. I could have made this long back wall in just two pieces, but the seam would have been right in the sink. So I opted for two seams with this little section, and then the third section is that big corner done in one piece. Once I had the pieces tight where they needed to be, I ran a pencil line all along the cabinets on the bottom. Then I measured one and a half inches out from that line to give me the overhang that I wanted, and cut the pieces to final width. Next I could line up the new sink template, mark it, and get it cut out. With the hole cut out, I flipped the piece over and put a slight round over on the bottom with my router. I wanted to get this done so I could apply a couple coats of flex seal on the bottom around the sink hole. In Stone Coat Countertops videos, they recommend using a product like you would waterproof a shower with, like Red Guard or Hydro Seal. But all my local store had in stock was the big buckets that were really expensive. I've used flex seal on other stuff in the past and it has always worked great. And really, the edge will be covered in epoxy and then the sink will be sealed in silicone. So this is just a third line of defense in case water somehow got in. Oh, and I should mention I'm only having to do this because the client wanted an undermount sink. You wouldn't have to do this with a regular drop-in style. With the flex seal done, I could flip the section back over and lay out for some dowel holes and get them drilled. Usually you would use countertop connectors that you route a groove into the bottom and seam the pieces together. That wasn't something I could find locally, so rather than ordering and waiting, I applied tape to the countertop and then used some Starbond CA glue to attach some blocks to give me a place to use clamps and pull the pieces tight. Then I simply added glue to the dowels and edges and clamped the pieces together to dry. I was honestly surprised how great this worked and how much lateral strength the tape had. After getting all the sections joined together, I ripped down some one and a quarter inch wide strips of MDF. Then I glued and nailed these pieces on the bottom front of all the countertop pieces. 
This was just to give the countertop the appearance of being thicker. Next I got the island bar attached using the holes that I had pre-drilled in the steel supports. This probably would have been plenty strong, but technically speaking if you put a lot of weight on the outer edge, the front edge could still potentially lift up. So I went ahead and drove some screws through the top into the solid framing below to really lock it on. So to ever remove this piece, the countertop will have to be destroyed, but I figured there's really no reason to remove it other than to get rid of it, so not really a big deal. To attach all the other sections, I just used these angle brackets inside the cabinets. Next, I mixed up some Bondo to fill those screw holes and put a coat over all the seams. Really, the seams were almost perfect. There was just a tiny bit of blade chatter from the saw in a couple spots, but this made the seams completely disappear. Then, even though I got the pieces fit pretty good, I ran some silicone caulk along the wall since epoxy is liquid after all and you don't want it leaking behind the cabinets. To save a lot of damage to people's hips, I used the Bondo can to trace and cut out all the outer corners on the island. Once that was done, I used the router to put a slight round over on all the edges. This is an example of always trying to think ahead. I knew I wouldn't be able to get my router tight to the wall in a couple spots, so I made sure I got those rounded over before installing. Lastly, I could get everything sanded smooth with 220 grit. I'm using the black marble kit from Stone Coat Countertops and it comes with this black undercoat as the first step. If you want more details on any of this stuff with the boxy, I definitely recommend checking out their YouTube channel. They have hundreds of videos that explain everything way better than I'm able to. After the first coat dried, I quickly sanded it again with 220 grit and applied a second coat. Next, it was on to the first coat of epoxy. It's a 1 to 1 ratio with the parts A and B, and then I mixed in the black metallic powder. I moved the two pieces that I could over to my shop, and then had my brother-in-law, whose house this is for, come over to help decide how he wanted it to look. We poured the epoxy and then spread it out with an eighth inch trowel. Then using the chop brushes, we chopped the entire piece in a random order. This mixes and swirls up the metallic epoxy even more and also removes all the trowel lines. I also made sure to really work a good coat on around all the edges. After chopping, I could go through and torch the surface for the first time, which helps release all the air bubbles. The black metallic looks sweet as is, but next we mixed up the white metallic powder that came in the kit and started adding in some more character. We did a combination of simply pouring the white on, using a stir stick for finer lines, and you can see I'm also chopping some of the white in with the chop brush for the same swirled effect. Honestly, we were just playing around with it until my brother-in-law thought it looked how he wanted. This epoxy has a really long open time, so you have plenty of time to work with it. And if we did something we didn't like, we just covered it back up with the black epoxy and washed it out. After we were done messing with it, I torched it for the third and final time and it leveled out beautifully. The camera does absolutely no justice for how cool this metallic looks in person. After the epoxy set for a couple hours, I came back out and wiped the drips off the bottom edge while they were still gummy. The next day, after knowing how he wanted it to look, I went through and did the same process on the other pieces at the house. I will say, I know a ton of people complain about ads popping up during videos, 
But if it weren't for Stone Coat Countertops ad coming up while I was actually watching some videos, I probably would have never even heard of them or even pitched the idea of doing the epoxy. So I thought that was pretty funny. After the first pieces had dried for a full day, I scuff sanded with 220 grit. Then I mixed up just some plain clear epoxy for the second flood coat, troweling and chopping it the same as before and torching it three times, a few minutes in between each time. You can see it cleared up and laid out like glass. I moved on to other parts of the remodel and let the countertops cure for a while, but here I am installing the undermount sink. This was a pretty nifty setup to get it installed pretty easily by myself. Drilling the faucet hole and then caulking the back edge with matching backsplash grout caulk were the finishing touches. I really wish my camera did a better job of showing how cool it looks in person. I wasn't sure if I'd personally like how glossy they are, which you can buff the sheen down if you wanted to but it does look great in this kitchen. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the process. Please like the video, and if you're not already, please subscribe for the next video, which will be this entire remodel put together. Until next time, take care.